I am Anthony L. Elmore, President and Founder of Proud Black Buddhist World Association. We are not only the Black Buddhist Voice in America, we are the Black Buddhist Voice of the world. In fact, we are the American Buddhist Association. We delineate ourselves from the Asian Buddhist sects, whereas the thinking is Buddhism is some Asian on a mountain meditating. We only practice the teachings taught by the 13th century black Japanese sage Nichiren Chon. Today we bring you an exciting black Buddhist lecture. My lecture today is Buddhism and Bill Cosby goes to jail. Let's get into our lecture. Now, it is commonly understood that the Buddha attained Buddhahood after meditating under the Bodha tree for seven weeks or 49 days. Now, it is the Lotus Sutra that teaches us that the correct teachings of the Buddha is, is not him meditating under the Bodha tree to attain enlightenment, but in the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha explains that he taught the fact that he came under the Bodha tree and meditated for seven weeks and attained enlightenment. That was only an expedient means. He explains this in the whole bin chapter of the Lotus Sutra, or the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra. It is in this chapter where he, where he explains that he lived some 100,000 trillion billion years ago and he attained enlightenment through, through making the law his teacher. He made the law his teacher and he simultaneously attained the cause and effect uh, virtue of being the Thuskom one or the Buddha. Now, what you will find in our world today are people still trying to attain enlightenment through meditation? That is not who we are. Now, we told you that we practice the teachings of the 13th century black Japanese sage. His name was Nichiren. Nichiren means sun lotus and shonen means priest. So we call him Nichiren Shonen. Now, Nichiren Shonen taught by way of letters. These letters are called the Gosho. And the way he explains the Lotus Sutra best is in the Gosho called the Gift of Rice. Now the Gift of Rice reads, quote, The true path lies in affairs of this world. He goes on further. He says the Golden Light Sutra states, quote, to have a profound knowledge of this world is itself Buddhism. He goes on further. The Nirvana Sutra states, quote, all of the non-Buddhist scriptures and writings in society are themselves Buddhist teachings and not non-Buddhist teachings. And he goes on further. He says, when the great teacher Milo compared these passages from the one of the sixth volume of the Lotus Sutra that reads, quote, no worldly affairs of life or work are ever contrary to the true reality. He revealed their meanings and pointed out that although the first two sutras are profound, since their meaning is still shallow and fails to approach that of the Lotus Sutra, they relate to secular matters in terms of Buddhism, whereas it is the Lotus Sutra that teaches that secular matters are the entirety of Buddhism. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, the story of Buddhism, Bill Carson goes to jail, this is not a secular matter, but these are Buddhist teachings. Now, four years ago, I did a lecture, I think it was called Buddhism, Bill Cosby and black people. On that lecture that I did in 2014, 
I kind of talk about Bill Cosby because he was uh, besieged with the allegations of um, sexual misconduct. Now, Bill Cosby has gone to jail. But let's, let me take you back to 2014 and let's watch some scenes from my 2014 lecture. We're going to come back and continue our Black Buddhist lecture, Buddhism and Bill Cosby go to jail. Let's watch these scenes. My lecture today is called Buddhism, Bill Cosby, and Black People. Currently, um, the world, uh, the world media is talking about Bill Cosby and who is known as America's Dad is involved in a lot of sexual allegations. And what they're talking about is that what is going to happen to the legacy of Bill Cosby. Now, one of the things that you would not find in Buddhism, or you find very rare in Buddhism, is that you see actually African and African American teachers in Buddhism. Buddhism, the way it is taught in America, is dominated by Japanese. And they teach a style of Buddhism that's totally different from the highest teachings of the Buddha, Shakyamuni. They teach something that's totally different. They teach a Buddhism that's dominated in Japanese culture, that's dominated in Japanese history. We're taught you, or we're told you, that everything in Buddhism is based upon what? The Lotus Sutra. The Lotus Sutras is the highest of the Buddhist teachings. Now, the title of the Lotus Sutra is called Nyoho Renge Kyo, which is means the mystic law of cause and effect teachings. And it was Nichiren, the messenger of the Buddha, that put the word Nam in front of it. So we chant the word Nam Nyoho Renge Kyo to a scroll. This is the scroll which is called a Gohanzan. Now we chant to this Gohanzan to bring out our higher life condition or to tap. This is the Gohanzan. And we tap our Buddha nature through chanting Nam Mu Yoho Renge Kyo. Now let's take this back into Mr. Bill Cosby. Let's give you an understanding of Buddhism. Now, one of the things that Bill Cosby had, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Cosby had what is called good fortune. Again, Bill Cosby had what is called good fortune. The reason that Bill Cosby was able to do the things that he did was he was a man that had what? He had good fortune. See, Buddhism teaches us that we are born into this world with cause and effects. For example, when you are born into the world, when you look at, say, a sperm and an egg, a sperm and an egg breaks itself down and it comes together and there's 23 chromosomes of the man and 23 chromosomes of the woman and, and it forms a, a unit. Well, within that unit, there is what is called the ten aspects. For example, once the egg or human is born, or even a human is conceived, beyond that, the DNA, the DNA of a human being is already there because that human has what is called a karma. A karma determines your life circumstances, whether you're weak or strong or tall or, or short, or what have you, you are born with what is called a karma. Let me be clear. The reason that Bill Cosby is in jail is because of the law of cause and effect. Somewhere down the road, he made a cause and he's getting an effect. This in Buddhism is called karma. Karma means the law of cause and effect. Now, there's a ghost show. 
title, The Entity of the Mystic Law, that explains this. Now, the Gosha reads, quote, The mystic principle, that is, the essential nature of phenomena, possess two aspects. The defiled aspect and the pure aspect. If the defiled aspect is operative, this is called delusion. If the pure aspect is operative, this is called enlightenment. Enlightenment constitutes the realm of Buddhahood. Delusion constitutes the realm of ordinary mortals. Uncle, you see, Bill Cosby created bad karma or misfortune. You see, there is a go show called The Strategy of the Lotus Sutra, and it writes about fortune. And this is what it reads. When one comes to the end of one's good fortune, no strategy whatsoever avails. When one's karmic rewards are exhausted, even one's retainers no longer follow one. You survive because you still have both good fortune and rewards. Now, in the case of Mr. Bill Cosby, the reason that he was prosecuted and the reason that he's in jail is because his good fortune has run out. You see, Bill Cosby was immensely successful because of his good fortune and rewards. However, he ended up in jail because his karmic rewards are exhausted. Let me explain something to you about the Buddhist religion. We learn about karma rewards and good fortune. We develop karma rewards via the law of cause and effect. When the pure aspect is operative, we gain the effects of the pure operatives. Now, but if the defile effects is operative, then we gain the effects of the file effects. Because if it's operative, you are going to, in common sense terms, you are going to reap what you sow. Now, let me put this in another way. We explain your whole ring game kyo. Let's put this in a way with the words of Dr. King. Now, Dr. King said that, he said, quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. You see, Dr. King got this quote from Theodore Parker, a transcendentalist or a Buddhist. Now, it was William Cullen Bryant who said, truth crush the earth shall rise again. Uncle, you see, this is how Nietzsche explains it in the Go Show. Now, this Go Show is titled The True Aspect of All Phenomena. And it reads, the expedient means chapter of the first volume of the Lotus which states, quote, the true aspect of all phenomena only be understood and shared between Buddhas. This reality consists of an appearance, a nature, or an entity, and their consistency from beginning to end. The Gosho further reads, now it reads, the true aspect invariably manifests in all phenomena, and all phenomena invariably manifest in ten factors. The ten factors invariably manifest in the ten worlds, and the ten worlds invariably manifest in life and in the environment. Now, it is in the theater of the life of Bill Cosby. He is getting locked up and in jail that illustrates the perfect example of the Buddhist teachings of the true aspect of all phenomena and the manifestation of the Ten Worlds. Now, we don't want to get too theoretical, but 
we do want to introduce you to Buddhist teaching. You see, all phenomena manifest its true aspect. That is, there are ten aspects or a way of explaining the law of cause and effect. You see, the first one is, first of all, let me go through it fast. There's appearance, nature, entity, power, influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and consistency of beginning to the end. Now, let's take this step by step. The first one is an appearance. We see 81-year-old Bill Cosby, who was partially blind, and being locked up in jail. That's an appearance. Now, the nature, we understand clearly the nature of Bill Cosby, who was once America's dad, being characterized as a common sexual predator, being put in jail. Now, the three is this. See, when you have an appearance of an entity, it creates what? Or when you have an appearance of a nature, rather, it creates what? Number three, an entity. Because it's an entity, it creates a power. You see, that power creates an influence, and the influence creates an inherent cause. The inherent cause creates a relationship. Then there's a latent effect and a manifest effect, and all of this is consistent from beginning to the end. This is kind of explain the law of cause and effect. Now, not only does all phenomena manifest in aspects, but it will manifest ten worlds. You see, these are ten worlds or life conditions. Now, the lowest is hell, then you got hunger, you got animality, that is, of on your instincts, hell, hunger, animality, then you got anger. Now, then the fifth world is the world of humanity, nothing good, nothing bad. That the sixth world is the world of heaven or the world of rapture. Now, these are the lower six worlds. Now, if Bill Cosby is expected to survive in prison, then he must develop the higher four worlds. You see, he is not only Bill Cosby, but he is Dr. Cosby. Now, Dr. Cosby has the ability to develop the capacity of what? Of learning. See, learning. See, learning is a higher life condition where you are more disciplined, where you are more introspection, you more into yourself. So that's learning, and then there is, there's another world called self-realization. This is the world where you are creative. When you develop and you're creative, you are not looking outside of yourself, but you look into your, inside yourself and you develop your creative ability. That's called self-realization. Now, there's another world that's even higher than that, and that's called Bodhisattva, where you look to do good for others. It's kind of like what we call a Christ-like, where we do missionary work, or we do we change our lives for the benefit of humanity. Now, the tenth world is the world of Buddhahood. Now, what is the world of Buddhahood? The world of Buddhahood is not so complicated. It's not where you reach some out of space world. The world of enlightenment is simply the phase of your life where the pure aspect is operative. That is what it means to be enlightened when your pure aspect is operative. Now, let me explain that now Bill Cosby can take the opportunity to create his best work. He can create his best work by going through a challenging situation. You see, we mentioned earlier about the fact that Bill Cosby suffered from bad fortune. We live in a time in history whereas we have the Me Too movement. Whereas the idea of just being accused or suspicious of sexual misconduct can ruin a person's career. In short, it is a liability in today's world to be even associated with one who's accused of sexual misconduct. The point is not whether Bill Cosby is guilty or innocent of sexual misconduct. The fact remains that we have over 60 women who have not only come out and accused Bill Cosby 
of sexual misconduct, a jury found Bill Cosby guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault on you know, indecent assault for drugging and sexually assaulting Andrew Constance in his home in Philadelphia in 2004. In the case of Bill Cosby, he experienced a clear-cut case of bad fortune. It could have been characterized that Bill Cosby's conviction was a case of white people and the white system unjustly convicting a black man. However, this was not the case. The case of Bill Cosby, there was, there was black women who, who particularly made it their business to see Bill Cosby put in jail. Not particularly, there's a 35-year-old woman, and she was the prosecutor. Her name is Kristen Fedden. Now, this black woman brought other black women to testify against Bill Cosby. The black women explained that they were under disproportionate pressure not to speak out against Bill Cosby at all. I want you to first of all meet Miss Kristen Feden, the black woman who is credited for putting Bill Cosby in jail. Let's meet Miss Kristen Feden. I'm going to come back and finish this Black Buddhist lecture called Buddhism and Bill Cosby. A judge sentenced Bill Cosby to three to ten years for drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant at his home nearly 15 years ago. More than 60 other women have also accused Cosby of sexually assaulting them. Now, we got a chance to speak to the 35-year-old prosecutor, Kristen Fedden, who played a very instrumental role in this case. She was the one who actually went to Toronto three years ago to interview Andrea Consen when the district attorney's office was considering reopening this case. Now, early on in the investigation, Fedden pressed the DA's office to charge Cosby, and if not for her, the DA said his team would not have gotten the conviction. As a young lawyer and to be now connected to this historic case for the rest of your life, what was that like to hear the district attorney give you the credit? It was very touching. It meant a lot to me because I have two young boys. I have a wonderful husband. I have a wonderful family. But I put in a lot of sacrifice as well for this case. And with all of my sex cases, I don't recommend charges lightly because I understand the stigma that can attach when someone is charged with a crime as serious as sexual assault. Do you think it means even more because in 2015 when Cosby was charged there was no Me Too movement? Sure. I think that the Me Too movement is a very powerful movement because when you have a victim of crime and I think it's important to just go back to victims of crime. They're humiliated. They're ashamed. They're embarrassed. That isolation, that feeling that they won't be believed. And unfortunately, you saw it with Andrea Constand. You see it with the Kavanaugh accusers. What was the first thing Andrea said to you after the sentence was read? I believe I asked her, are you happy with the sentence? And she said yes. And that meant the world to me. Do you consider yourself a trailblazer? I believe that I was part of a very important case and I had a team of people to help me. I had, as I have in many cases, a very strong and courageous victim. Let me explain how practicing Buddhism can help Bill Cosby and the black community bring forth the positive legacy of Bill Cosby. Now, the Buddha or Buddhism is based on the Lotus Sutra. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it is the lotus flower that blooms in the swamp. You see, the lotus flower doesn't bloom in the nice, pure, clear water, but it blooms in the swamp and it comes out a beautiful flower. In our lives, when we are faced with so many problems, 
to chant him. No, or no, your holy name, you can change your life because you develop the pure aspect of your life. See, Buddhism teaches us that we can change obstacles into an opportunity. If someone gives you lemons, you can make lemonade. You see, what is important, or what's the most important thing, an act that we all cause can take? Or what is the most important act that we, black people, who have seen our hero go down, what is the best action that we can take? You see, there is a uh, go show that Nishan writes is called the strategy of the Lotus Sutra and reads, quote, therefore you must summon a great power of faith more than ever. Do not blame the heavenly gods if you exhaust your good fortune and lose their protection. Mathakado was renowned as a brave general who had mastered the art of war, yet he was defeated by the armies under the emperor's command. Even Fai Kuai and Chang had their failures. It is the heart that is important. No matter how earnestly Nitrin prays for you, if you lack faith, it will be like trying to set fire to wet tinder. Spur yourself to muster the power of faith. Regard your survival as money. Uncle. He goes on further and has a go show called the Entity of the Mystic Law. And it reads again, if the pure aspect is operative, this is called enlightenment. Enlightenment constitutes the realm of Buddhahood. The illusion constitutes the realm of ordinary mortals. You see, there is a ghost show, and the ghost show is called The One-Eyed Turtle Folding on a Log. It can read, quote, When the sun rises in the eastern sky, the light of all stars fade completely. Ladies and gentlemen, what this means is this. Of all the myriad of problems that Bill Cosby had by losing his legacy and going to jail and losing his self-dignity and respect, when the sun shines, the stars disappear. In life and in problems that we have as human beings, our problems are as myriad and as many as the stars. But when the sun rises, the stars disappear. And what this means in Buddhism is that through tapping our Buddha nature, we can make our life like the sun. In other words, we can shine so bright. Bill Cosby still has life. Bill Cosby still has a mind. He still has the creative ability to go out and do things and do positive things and make positive causes despite being embarrassed for going to jail, but he has built the fortune for himself, but he only has to make the good causes. This is what Buddhism teaches us. For example, in the life of Malcolm X, he went to prison, he came, he was a pimp, he was a hustler, he was a thief, he was a con artist, but he became one of the greatest leaders and had one of the greatest black heroes in American history. Now, it was about, what, 77 years old when Nelson Mandela got out of prison. It was Nelson Mandela who became the president of South Africa. Now, when Nelson Mandela left the prison, he left the prison. He made the pure aspect operative. 
He did not have uh, feelings against white people or anybody. When he said he left that prison, he left that prison. And he was able to lift himself up and bring his people together. It is a Bill Cosby who still has the ability to lift himself up and to help be the value and the dad and America's dad all over again. It only a matter of faith, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I would like to end this lecture with a Gosha passage again. And it's called the Royal Palace. Now, it is us at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association that encourage Bill Cosby to dig within himself and only let the pure aspect become operative. Now, the ghost show the Royal Pilots reads, quote, No sword can cut the air, no fire can burn water, similarly, no fire can harm a saint, a worthy, a person of good fortune, or a person of wisdom. I am Anthony F. Elmore, President and Founder of the Proud Black Buddhist World Association. Thank you very much. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord I'll suit your way. I pray every day to do my best to practice peace and love and respect. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. Devotion to the mystic law and cause and effect teaching. I believe and wisdom. Reaching, I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way. The Lord will suit you. Makes a lot of sense. It's about self development and enlightenment. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray. The Lord will suit your way, the way that I pray, overcome my sins. I say the Lord's title again and again. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord will suit your way, the Lord will suit your has the test. The Lord of Sushi who brings me happiness. I get down on my knees and I pray every day. I pray the Lord of Sushi away. Falling in the Lord of Sushi, I start to sing. I sing so loud, I start to scream. I get down on my knees. And I pray every day, and I pray the Lord will suit your way. I don't pray like my Eastern brother. I pray and sing with my own culture. I get down on my knees, and I pray every day, and I pray the Lord will suit your way. I pray the way that I feel I pray the black way and I start to squeal I get out of my knees and I pray every day and I pray the Lord will suit your way there's one thing 
you must know about me I get like the church folk and I get happy I get down on my knees and I pray every day And I pray, Lord, to suit your ways I get down on my knees and I pray every day And I pray, and I pray, I pray Go.